Hi, I'm Steve and in this video today I'm going to show you how to use the motion blur effect in your photos using Luminar Neo. Whether you're enhancing speed or simulating motion from scratch, this is a super creative way to add energy and storytelling to your images. You can also use it creatively with your night photography as well, which is what I'm going to show you today, helping you bring more life to your light sources. So let's get started. So this is the image that we're working on today and it's this fire exit sign that I want to make a little more dramatic and add a dream like glow. Let's take a look at an overall before and after and as you can see I've already finished the edit for the photo and I'll run you through some of the highlights quickly and we want to ensure that we retain the details in our light sources so to do that I use the super contrast tool and um, this one is crucial for night photography so give this one a try to get the most out of your light sources. And then onto the color grade. It was inside a color harmony that I just brought down the temperature a little bit and used the cooler tones. And then inside of develop, I did the same thing, going down to the tone curve and working in the RGB channels to reduce warm tones and also bringing some green, which will come into play in a moment. And then I added some warm tones into the highlights with the toning tool and then green tones into the shadows. Then it was inside of the color tool. So it was here where I did the majority of my work and I was going for a cinematic color grade. So I color shifted towards cooler blues and greens, but it was inside of the saturation where I really managed to get the look I was going for. So I boosted all of the warm colors and then combined that with the remove color cast tool. So you can see how much of a difference that actually makes. And we get to keep the warm tones in the highlights, making them strong, but without them being too overpowering in other areas of the photo. And then it was just some final tweaks. I made the image a little more gritty in the develop tool because I thought it was looking a bit too flat. And then I added some more contrast and then one more color tool for some sort of changes and that was it. So as mentioned, we're going to be working on these light sources here. And the first thing we're going to do is duplicate the layer so that we can work on them separately. This will then open up the layer properties box and we're going to brush in the area that we want to work on. And for now, it's just going to be the one sign and we're only going to draw or brush over the light. Okay, so we don't want anything really surrounding it. So make sure that's all covered. All right. And then when that's done, we'll close that down and then we'll head down to blur inside of creative. And you get a few options, but we want to use the motion tool and we're going to bring that up to quite a way like so. And then we're also going to adjust the angle. So we want to basically offset the text here. Now, if you were working with a moving subject, then you will want to make sure that you match the direction that that subject is moving. But for this effect, we want to just offset it. So you choose an angle that looks good for your light source, and then we can open up the layer properties again. So we are going to work with the opacity and screening, but the first thing I'm going to do is resize the window and we can get that offset look a little bit stronger. I'm going to adjust it mostly in the side that the text is leaning in that angle and then opacity. So make sure that it's blended in a way that looks good for your photo. And then we're going to use the screen blending mode, which always looks good for strong light sources like this. It might not work for the other one, but we'll see in a moment. All right, so just offset that a bit more. And then there's gonna be other things that we can do to make the lights a little bit more pronounced. So one of those things is adding details. So we're going to bring up all of these details and you might not see that, difference but before and after shows you that it does actually bring more definition to the the motion blur and then the same with the structure tool as well you can go to the left to soften the the blur but we're going to go to the right to add more clarity and detail and then finally there's the glow tool so this will give us a few options to work with i'm going to work with the soft focus first bring that up that's already looking good you can also you know experiment with the other choices we've got glow and the autumn effects as well just do what looks good for your photo all right but that looks good for mine so that's soft focus next it's onto the other light source we need to duplicate our base layer make sure that you do that and then head back into the masking tool once again and we're going to brush over that area and then it's down to the blur tool. So here I'm going to bring up motion blur once again and have the angle mirrored to the original. So offset that again and then we'll bring, yes, yeah, resize the window first so we can see what sort of offset effect we're getting and then bring the opacity down. Somewhere around there looks pretty cool. 
So let's just see if screen works. Yeah, so it might not work for all of your light sources, but I think for like, you know, true light sources that aren't reflections, it's gonna look great. So just do what works well. Again, we'll add details and structure to make that reflection and the blur more defined. And there we go. So let's, let's have a look at the before and after. It's a huge difference, but let's also just hide these layers so you can see the difference there. So that's how you can use motion blur effect then for your night photography. If you're using the motion blur tool, on subjects, remember that you do need to match the direction in which they're headed. Light sources get creative with that angle and then combine it then with the details and structure tool to add more definition. And if you're working with just light sources, give the glow tool a go as well because you can get some really cool effects with that. So I hope you found that tutorial useful. And if you did, drop us a like and a comment. And don't forget, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel so that you can keep up to date with more Luminar Neo tips, tricks, and tutorials. And I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.